Welcome to another for special interviews here at the Government Information Service. I am Sherry Ann Noel, and during this interview, I am privileged to speak with Honorable Dr. Jeffrey Hanley. He is the Minister of Education, Youth Empowerment, Social Development, Gender Affairs, Aging and Disabilities, Ecclesiastical and Faith Based Affairs, Housing and Human Settlement. And he's a Minister of Government of St. Kitts and Nevis. He is in Grenada as part of the 47th regular meeting of the CARICOM heads and he has you know taken the time off to come and sit and have a chat with us um dr hanley first off the bat um rather interesting portfolios and uh, education across the region you're here for the 47th regular meeting what would you like to see happen in terms of the development of education and curriculum for youth across the region. Thank you very much. I must say that um, the region, presently we are um, going through curriculum development um, reform because one recognizes that the curriculum that we use for a certain number of years is not really relevant now. And there was the emphasis that persons thought that it was too academical in terms of heavy and from Sinkit's perspective we are making several changes um, to our curriculum and I believe this is something that is happening in other member states making sure that the curriculum that we provide our students with they are the real life-changing curriculum incorporating a lot of skills as well in it and of course incorporating sports as a means of transferring the various topics in education through that means. And you hear um, the, the Caribbean community we're faced with a number of challenges as it relates to our young people. We know we have security challenges, we have issues of deviant behaviors and so. Coming to this particular conference, um, what is it that St. Kitts and Nevis is bringing to the table to help address, to bring to the fore, to get like some sort of suggestions and, and action towards these particular ills? Well, although some of the things we, we are go I will share might not necessarily be on the agenda item, but through our networking as minister to minister, even over our lunch breaks and our breakfasts, there is always the information sharing in terms of the best practices. So yes, as you rightly said, that there are a number of challenges that the region is facing. So for us now, especially as a people, it is for us to refocus and look at things that worked, those that did not work because they might have been too ambitious and try to make sure now that things synchronize. There was a time when uh, the young people, being a uh, youth myself, as I still would categorize myself, and I served as the director of youth for many years, it was always felt that we provide them with programs rather than soliciting from them what they want to see or what would benefit them. So there's also the concept of the re-education and uh, further communication and collaboration with our young people in particular, getting an idea from them as to what is it they really want or what they too can do to change what's happening as it relates to even those, as you mentioned, in terms of deviant behavior. I remember while I serve as a principal, I, my vision was to ensure that my school was a child-friendly school. So there were a lot of innovative um, things that I did at my institution, which I often said to people, in the two years that I served there, I had never had to strap someone for fighting because the children saw this school as one that was very engaging. We had our school gym. We had our school arcade, our students were using the kindergartners or using the, uh, 
their tablets. So there was always that engagement. And this is what I intend to do in a, quite a number of our schools as I serve as the Minister um, of Education. And I would want to believe that a lot of the other education ministers in the regions are doing similar things in terms of addressing some of the challenges that they are facing using new methods, new innovation. Robotics is something that is really catching on right now. So that is an area that um, the government is heavily investing in. And I, could, I should say the region because I know that, you know, the OECS, they have the robotics um, program as well. So from a minister standpoint, the interacting with others, learning from their best practices is part of the motivation for me being at the meeting. So we're going to speak a, a little more now to the Caribbean community. Um, we know um, CARICOM celebrated 50 years in, in 2023. We, you, we are in the 51st year. Um, as a minister of government, how do you feel about the progression of CARICOM? And what would you say are some of the challenges in terms of CARICOM moving by leaps and bounds that, you know, a lot of the heads would like to see happen? Well, CARICOM has served the region well for the time that it has been around. There are many benefits that um, each island state can recall for them personally and as a region. But with everything, there is always a need in terms of wanting something more. I believe this be my first meeting. I can see a greater togetherness um, going forward. I, and the collaboration is to me on par. So I believe in the future, we would have the oneness that everybody is looking um, forward to. Finding the resources is a major challenge for the CARICOM community or even when the resources are found, accessing the resources from member state based on whatever they might be facing, whether it's a disaster, sometimes based on what I've been hearing, it takes forever for the country to, to benefit. So I'm hoping going forward, these are some of the areas that we see great improvement on. Um, this morning while I sat in, um, quite a number of the prime ministers in particular who suffered, um, you know, after burial, when you listen to their stories, it's real emotional and painful. And I would hope that the financial resources that they are looking forward to in terms of rebuilding, uh, that CARICOM will uh, be in a position to encourage and speed up the process for those other entities or organizations who normally support CARICOM. But from all accounts, all of them were impressed with how CARICOM handled the matter in terms of assistance. And one of the areas of highlight for me, which was very um, well articulated, was the way how CARICOM came together in assisting Haiti out of the crisis that they were in, proving that democracy still works. You said that you have been an advocate and doing advocacy works for work for youth and so on, and, and you they hold a special place in your heart. During the opening ceremony at the Charter Hall last evening, there was a spoken word done by Aquino Romain. Um, what are, are your thoughts on how he articulated the issues? of the region and brought it together there. I was very impressed with the opening ceremony and even super impressed when I saw so many young men participating because too often there is this, this discussion that um, we are losing our boys or losing our men. And when I saw them participating in all areas in, in the choir and the dance and the, the drumming, I was very impressed, but the the poem that was rendered, you we, um, that was so creatively put together and well executed. That young man touched just about every aspect of both the struggle 
or the struggles rather of the region, the life lessons and where we need to position ourselves. Instead of blaming one another, we need to focus on us because at the end of the day, it is you and it is we. No matter how we try to be different, we are still one and the uniqueness of each island really brings the oneness even closer. But I wanted to meet him personally because I am a creative myself and I thought he did an excellent job in delivering that poem, Yui. Even though I didn't attend Yui, I felt as if I was on one of those campuses. Okay, so um, do you believe that, that his words actually spoke through the minds of the, the CARICOM heads in terms of charting the way forward based on the message that came through? Most definitely because I can say to you over dinner, it was the topic over our dinner in terms of the points that were highlighted. Some were able to indicate that they'll pay more attention to certain things on their return. So he really made an impact on all of the heads because as you would be aware as well, your prime minister, the, the chair of CARICOM now, he's always using UWE. And before I let you off to an, another important issue around the, the sphere of the, the region is, is that of the Citizenship by Investment Program. I know it's happening in, in St. Kitts. I think you would have been the first. Yes. Right. Um, there were discussions as to whether or not it has longevity in terms of St. Kitts and Nevis. How do you all feel about it, its progression, and do you believe that with proper structure, the CBI program can continue. Thank you very much for that question. Um, Sinkis happened to be the longest. I think we, we are 41 years now, um, Saturday, 1983 or 84. And uh, over the years, uh, it would have done a great job in terms of the development of the country, uh, the federation rather. But as we, we advance, you recognize as well globally, there has been a number of challenges based on maybe some errors that were made. But I am pleased to report that um, in St. Kitts and Nevis, we were able to make the necessary adjustments that would please just about the entire world based on our expectations and even in terms of investors. So based on the changes that were made, we should be in or we would be in a much better position in terms of ensuring that the program remains as strong as it ought to be or even get stronger now that we would have satisfied those who wanted to see certain changes. And for you as the deputy um, here representing your prime minister, um, what would you say would you would like to be your greatest takeaway for when you get back to St. Kitts Nevis in terms of what would have happened here, bringing issues to the fore and getting the necessary discussions and actions? Well, going back from this meeting, it was really an eye-opener because being my, my first as I'm a, the Deputy Prime Minister. So it is my intention, of course, as always, you know, to present your report to your Prime Minister and highlighting the the various areas that were that were discussed and the opportunities that were made available. Because if I can say, you know, by the way, I had a bilateral meeting earlier with the ambas ambassador of Austria, which turned out to be a very fruitful discussion. We were able to look at possibilities of increase in student scholarships and even assisting in other areas of training, capacity building, and even looking at resilience in terms of the housing that um, we want to be providing for our low-income owners, making sure that we find the most sustainable materials that is climate-friendly as well. So all of this is um, packaged coming out of the 47th um, CARICOM meeting is something that I hold dear and I will try my best to through the Prime Minister and the government for us to implement as many 
of the discussions, those that we have control over. I just want to take this opportunity to firstly thank the Honorable Prime Minister Deacon for the hospitality that his team has been showing to the entire conference and meeting and personally as well on behalf of my Prime Minister who is also his friend to congratulate him as the income with the cheer of CARICOM and there is no doubt that he will continue to do a great job having taken over from President of Guyana who was a champion for agriculture and other areas, but more specifically, the 20 by 25, 25 by 25, I'm sustainable. So I want food security, sorry. So I want to congratulate Honorable Deacon on his role as the chair, and we look forward to great things to come in six months. Thank you very much, Rose. I was speaking there with the Deputy Prime Minister of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, the Honorable Dr. Jeffrey Henley. I am Sherry Noel, thanking you so much for viewing.